<clears throat> Bingle Bongle Conkus Plimbo. Sorry, I just want to be the first person to start a video by saying Bingle Bongle Conkus Plimbo. Anyway, uh, Terraria. Funny little sandbox game where you fight God and his internal organs. Along the way, you meet a few dudes that help you, like Average Child, Dead Man, Other Dead Man, and Boss Summoner. No, no, the other one. But you also get some more personal guys, either pets, mounts, or summons. Now, I don't have any friends of my own, so I'm going on a journey to force things to like me. Or in other words, get all the pets, mounts, and summons in the game. Enjoy. On day one, I started by spawning in, chopping a few trees, and building a few houses. I don't own the collector's edition of Terraria, but I grabbed the carrot pet from an item server, but it's not going to show up because of that. I decided to sacrifice my copper short sword to a slime so I don't have to fight it, and after a little exploring the merchant moves in, so I buy some arrows and start cave diving. I find a bit of lead until I decide to wait out the night inside, also making an enchanted boomerang. When morning comes I jump back in, and I get murked by a gnome on my way down. This eventually turns into a death fest that ends with a new law and order man on the grass outside of my house. I mine for a while, getting another heart before tapping out to go check the traveling merchant, who is selling a lot of stuff I want, but I'm too poor to get it. Back in the caves, I'm just mining for ores because I'm getting diced up by everything right now, like this blue slime. I found another life crystal and died yet again. If it isn't obvious yet, this is my first time in master mode, and I need to play master mode because of the boss pets that only drop in master mode. I realized that the underground isn't treating me well, so I decided to try the surface and find a desert and a pinky. By nighttime, I use a funny little feature to find a pyramid to get a flying carpet for basically free. Farther to the right is the corruption where I get my next weapon, the musket. I only have a hundred bullets, but I'm sure I'll be fine, he says as he dies almost immediately. I really need armor, so I'm going to keep throwing myself at the caves until that happens. I keep mining for quite a bit of tungsten and a pair of Hermes boots. Potions are very limited right now, so I'm carrying a campfire with me like it's my firstborn child. Another gold chest gave me an extracting error, which I need for a pet later. I died yet again, but went back because I saw a chest and one of my greedy little hands on it. I also found a different chest that had shoe spikes in it, and actually found two chests instead of the one I thought that was there. And getting a mace, and, you guessed it, another mace. After finding another life crystal and more mining, I go back home and make myself a full set of tungsten armor after calling it on day one. Day two started with a little bit more mining. I'm specifically looking for platinum and rubies because I want to fight the first boss today, King Slime. I pop a splunker and find a lot more ores, rubies, a gem cave, gold chest, and your left ball. I finally made a hook out of sapphire and also found another life crystal. I'm also mining silt for the extractinator I got yesterday. By the time I'm out of the mine, I have 90 tungsten and 45 platinum, with some that still needed mining, but I was rudely interrupted by a goblin army. I made some unorthodox defenses and died a shit ton, but goblin army is dead after only 20 minutes. I also replaced my musket with a harpoon and made a flaming mace, and then I make a bed in case I want to sleep for any reason. I also made a simple arena for some bosses later, then grabbed the last few gems and ores I left for the cave from before. I also found the goblin, so I made some spectre boots and built them a home in the underground with a fishing pool for myself. I also found a magic mirror while building, but I won't get rid of the recalls yet for a reason later. I also explored more of the surface, eventually finding the dungeon and making a bed there for later. I went back home and prepared to fight King Slime. Just kidding, I made a crown and went to the jungle to make some more houses. Pylons are usually slept on, but in this challenge it's a lot shorter with them, so I'm going to use the hell out of them. I also found a living tree farther to the left, also giving my first summon of the challenge, the Finch Staff. Now I'm in the snow with more house building. Then I go underground, find a demon altar, and make a slime crown. I also got a slime statue for him with the slimy staff later, but right now I'm looking for Ice Gauge, which is conveniently in this chest here. I'm also passively farming for snowflakes to get a flink staff. Back at home, I'm ready to fight King Slime, so I use my musket for the fight and get the pet on the first try. Also, the nurse gets bugged and does this for some reason. I went back over to the dungeon and have started building a goofy little contraption. The hoik, as many of you know, moves the player very fast, and I need to evade a big monster long enough to kill it. That monster is the dungeon guardian, and I need to kill it for the infamous bone key. There's many ways to do this, but the one I always do is the hoik at the top of the dungeon, like Yermir did all those years ago. I got everything set up, died a lot, then trapped one in the center. This is what the recalls were for earlier, because the magic mirror's use time is way too slow. Because this is master mode, the dude's got three times as much health, so it's going to take a long time to kill it. I was almost done after like 40 minutes, and then less with 2000 HP left, King Slime randomly spawns, knocking me out of the loop and killing me so close to the end, and I had some choice words about that. That's some bull ass shit right there. 
My next attempt started good until the Eye Cthulhu spawned, doing the same thing again. The last attempt I did today ended the same way, so I gave up and left it to tomorrow. As soon as I load into the world, an eye already wants to fight me, and fight me it shall. Armed with my trusty musket, the eye goes down with ease. I already wanted to fight the eye today so it wouldn't randomly spawn while farming for the bone key, so now I'm back to doing that. Just not yet. I drop by the corruption to get a flail in the underground desert for anything useful, specifically a bass statue and a magic conch. I got my bass statue and a lot of other junk, but no magic conch yet. Now it's time for bone keying. On definitely my first try, I caught one, and after 40 minutes of uninterrupted spinning, a skull has replaced my slime. This dude, pretty cool. Then I went to the underground jungle to look for anything useful at all. A boomstick, staff of Rioth, feral claws, ankle of the wind, etc. I only got the staff and boomstick after my first trip, so I'll head back tomorrow. Day 4 started with a quick grav potion in some skylands, but then it's right back to the jungle. I got all the resources needed to make a blade of grass, so that's exactly what I did. Now I'm at the corruption starting to build an eater of worlds arena. I also accidentally summoned it with a scarab bomb, and you can guess how that went. Back at home I made my flink staff. It's also raining slime, so I spend a while fighting King Slime again. After that I'm back in the corruption breaking more shadow worms and also getting the light pet. I start by prepping for another fight, and spawn the worm back in and die again, and again, and again. And then I gave up and started on a elevator because I got enough shadow scales to make a nightmare pickaxe. I found the funny little shark guy in a water chest down here too. Then I'm mining Hellstone because I think I can tank the rest of Preharbonum with full molten gear and a volcano. I also made an imp staff. I spent some time trying to organize my chest and then explored the jungle some more, and then blew up. Then I'm fighting the worm again, this time actually winning. I decided to keep the boss streak going by working towards Skeletron, but took a quick detour to go underground desert. The tavern keep was down here, so I bought two of the rods. By the time I'm done with the desert, I found five bass statues. Then I spent some time making some fishing holes because there's quite a lot of pets I could get from fishing. I also drowned the traveling merchant to get its hat when I go look for Shimmer, which is right now. I got my peddler's satchel and went right back to making water holes. After that I tried to fight Skeletron and beat him on my first try. I went home and did some housekeeping, then ran back to the dungeon, chopping all the trees while I went, also somehow getting the 1 in 1000 chance for Eucalyptus Sat, giving me a new pet. I'm also looking for a few different things in the dungeon. A Miramasa, a handgun, a shadow key, a cobalt shield, a colored voodoo doll, and a talent counter. On my first trip I got three of them, the Miramasa, key, and shield, then I ran to the corruption to craft the Knight's Edge. This was my first experience with the buff that happened recently, so I used it all the time. Now I've gone to hell. Nothing is particularly great out of the shadow chest for right now, other than a bow upgrade and a sun fury. But what I'm really after is the two pets that come from the chest, a shadow mimic and the baby imp. With neither of the pets on the left side of the world, I go to the underground ice to look for some snowflakes fur. My next goal is to fight Deerclops because he can drop three different things I need. The eye bone, the houndieth shootiest, and the Deerclops eyeball. The fight itself wasn't hard, and I got the Deerclops pet after the first fight. After a quick detour to the dungeon for a bewitching table and an alchemy table, I'm back in hell trying to farm imps and hellbats for an obsidian rose and a magma stone, also checking shadow chests. At one point I did find two chests right next to each other, and neither of them had the pet in them. After searching for like three quarters of the world, I find the shadow mimic pet. And after exploring the rest of the hell, I got no baby imp, so I'm gonna have to go lava fishing at some point. Now I mentioned how I picked up a slime statue earlier, and for good reason. Now that I have access to wiring, I can set up a circuit to kill slimes automatically, which is all for the infamous slime staff. While that's running, I really want to find an ankle of the wind so I can make frost spark and eventually terra spark boots. I ended up dying, but not before grabbing 15 silt. I've been buying a little bit of silt every time I do something, because one pet is one in a 10,000 chance for the extractinator, and I got it after less than 100 silt which is absolutely bonkers. I went back to the jungle, finding the anklet and also making my good boots. I still need two things from hell to make my terrace bar boots, but I'll deal with that soon enough. Right now though, I want a pogo stick, so I'm gonna buy a pogo stick. Almost immediately after I caught a gold crate and got a turtle mount. I also fought King Slime again because I'll need another one of his pets to make the combination pet with Queen Slime, which I am counting as a separate pet. I also got a slimy saddle from the treasure bag. Now it's grinding time. The two accessories I need in hell are going to take a while, so I make a platform and immediately get the magma stone. A quick detour to my shimmer pool, I get a lava charm, and then it's right back to farming. I get the rose eventually, and also finish my vanity set. Terra Spark boots aren't a huge upgrade, but having all the accessories in one is very nice. 
I'm not leaving hell just yet though. I need some lava bugs to go fishing, cause we all know fishing in lava sucks. So I'm going to get it over with as soon as possible. First session I caught 5 crates and got my baby imp and the blood shark mount. Very cool. My 5th angler class gives me the bunny mount. Then I'm back to the dungeon to hopefully get a tally counter and I finally got it. And then finally, over 7 hours after I made it and over 10,000 gel later, I have a slime staff. Also very cool. Now there's one event that no one likes to do, and that's the old one's armory. But because I have to get all the pets, I'm gonna have to do it a lot. So I started day 5 and making a long platform next to the dungeon. I spent most of the day fighting it to get some of the 3 pets from the dark mage, and proceeded to get all 3 after like 20 attempts, plus buying the other 2 rods. Even after getting all the pets, I still fight them more for the defender medals, cause if I can buy an armor set right after the mech bosses, it'll make tier 2 of the army so much easier. The last thing I need to do on day 5 is go back to the dungeon to farm for a clothed voodoo doll, a 1 in 300 drop that I get almost immediately. The start of day 6, I'm in the jungle about to fight Queen Bee. There are also 2 pets that I need from it, along with a summon weapon. I build a very small arena, and also taking a detour to get a vampire frog staff. Back at the hive, Queen Bee goes down with relative ease, also giving me the bee pet. I also made the summon right after that. There's one thing that gets overlooked very often, and that is golf. There's a hidden score behind every single character that counts up every time you score a point in golf, and 200 of these invisible points are required to get the golf cart mount from the golfer, so I made a setup that I can farm golf points AFK. This happens till my recording ends, so I guess that's the end of day 6. Day 7 started with some queen bee farming, and then after I got nothing I started to break apart hell for the eventual wall of flesh fight. And then it's back to golf, and after like 30 minutes, I'm riding in a golf cart. I also bought a pet from the traveling merchant. At the start of day 8 I go fishing in the desert to get a magic conch, also getting the tartar sauce along the way. Then I'm fishing in lava to get a demon conch, so now all I need is the weather radio from the angler so I can make a shell phone. I've never made a shell phone before, but it seems cool, so I'm gonna try it, why not? Then I mined a meteorite and then also refought Queen Bee. After 3 fights I didn't get the hornet pet, so I need to craft more spawners. The next fight I get the honey eyed goggles, something I completely forgot about and don't use at all. The fight after I got my nectar, so now I have 6 extra Queen Bee spawners that are for absolutely nothing. Then I'm fighting the eye Cthulhu, but to no avail. Only on my 9th attempt do I get the pet, and then I'm doing the eater of worlds, and I got that one on the first try, and this one's pretty cool. I also got the baby eater on the same one. I finally got my weather radio and made myself the shell phone. And then I fight Skeletron to get his pet, and also get it first try, along with Chippy's couch. Also somehow got a pink pearl which is now a galaxy pearl for some extra luck. I did basically everything I wanted to in pre-hard mode, and after a relatively easy fight, the world is now in hard mode. The first thing I do is shimmer my emblem to warrior cause I plan on being melee for at least a little bit. Then I go to the corruption to get all the new hard mode ores. I'm sure you've seen early hard mode progression before, so here we go. Molten pick to Medallion Pick, to Mithril Anvil, to Mithril Pick, to Titanium Forge, to Full Titanium Armor. Then I summon the Goblin Army. My plan is to get a Shadow Flame Knight, cause it's an absolute beast in early hard mode. And I get it on my first try. After that I get the Tax Collector, who I proceed to never talk to again after this. I had to build my own Howl, cause the original one generated over the jungle, but now I have a pylon to both oceans, which is really, really nice. I set up a glowing mushroom biome on top of a living tree, and I think that looks sick. Then I fight some ice golems to get my first pair of wings. Ice wings. The truffle finally moved in now, so now I can get the baby truffle pet. I still need to get an actual sword, so I set up a crimson biome with a pond. My plan is to get myself a blade tongue, a hard mode fish only caught in the crimson. And after like 40 minutes of fishing, I catch it. Then fight some corrupt mimics for another good weapon, the chain guillotines. On my 6th attempt, I finally get it, which ends day 8. Just kidding, I got a prime spawner during the goblin army and decided to give it a quick shot. I don't expect this attempt to go anywhere, just to see where I'm at and he's fucking dead. First thing I do on day 9 is buy a full set of armor and ballista from the tavern keep. The old one's army just got upgraded, and I want to try to get some of the weapons from the ogre. I end up losing the event, but I do kill the ogre to get a phantom phoenix and a creeper egg. Then I'm in the jungle killing everything I can see. Moss hornets can drop a BSR which I can trimmer for the ant shield, Turtles can drop the shells, and angry trappers can drop the Uzi. I'm digging around the temple for later when I can make it to the entrance and see that there's a hole right in front of the door that lets me right in. Very, very cool world generation that isn't bugged at all actually. Eventually I get a tattered B wing and with some extra souls, I now have B wings. Then I spend some time forming parts of the Ankh shield, like vitamins, a megaphone, and a blindfold which also turns into a pocket mirror, and also some armor polish too. As of now I have an armor bracing, the plan, a counter course mantra, reflective shades, and a Beazar, so all I need now is the adhesive bandage. 
I fight Prime again during the night to try to get its pet, and I do, somehow. Pirates decided to roll up too, so that's next I guess. I do need to get the mount from the Flying Dutchman and the Pirate Staff, so here we go. I get the mount after my first kill, and I think this one's pretty cool now that it has infinite flight. I didn't get the Pirate Staff though, but that's something I can do later when I have better stuff. I decided to fight the Destroyer that night too, and as I spawn it, I get hit in the head for a whopping 240 damage, and as you could guess, die very soon after that. Pretty good start if you'd ask me. I build a Hallow to farm some Light Shards, and eventually get a Dao of Pow. After that I killed Prime again to get full Hallowed Armor, which I take the jungle and get a BSR as soon as I get there. So I go back home and craft the Ankh Shield after shimmering that into an adhesive bandage. I also buy all the horses and the Pikachu ripoff from the Zoologist. I try to destroy her again, and this time I get a little bit further, but still die. I should say that this is my first melee playthrough, so I'm not that good at it. I also go to the jungle to get a few more life fruits, and then fish in my Hallowed Ocean for some Prismites. There are two melee weapons that I want that come from the Ogre. The Brand of the Inferno, and the Ghostly Glaive. I don't get either here and die instead, but then I thought of something. Some of the accessories I'm wearing give a few more sentries, but I can't summon the Ballista without more mana, so I decided, what if I got a non-Tavern Keep sentry? So I got the Queen Spider Staff, and the Normal Spider Staff too for that matter, and when I try it out with the army, it works flawlessly, giving me 5 spiders for free. With this, I easily take out the Ogre and get both swords from only one army. The Ogre pet only drops from tier 3, so I'm not going to bother farming for it now, and I got to test out both of them during a Solar Eclipse, and really really like the brand, especially with its parry. The Glaive was cool too, just not great for single targets. I tried the Destroyer yet again and still died, but I bought a Parapet from the Pirate and also somewhere bought the Flamingo Mount from the Zoologist. Then I try to switch it up and fight the twins, and also lose, so then I rage quit for the day. Day 10 starts with farming some more souls for boss spawners, and then I decide to change my class after getting a magic quiver. My plan is to stay melee until I can get a Daedalus Stormbow from a Mimic, and then shimmer my helmet to make it ranged. I got the Stormbow on my third try of the day, which is pretty good odds for me. Sometime later I'm farming Corruption, and cheese the hell out of the Ghastly Glaive. I put a target dummy down and constantly hit it to spawn the projectiles on the actual enemies, and this works pretty well. After I get the two dark shards I'm looking for, I farm for a few souls a night to make an onyx blaster. Then I finally recraft my helmet and grab a phantom phoenix from a chest, and I also get the dart rifle from a mimic while farming souls. My plan is to make a stalker's quiver, but to do that, I need to get a putrid scent, so it's back to farming corrupt mimics. I was not prepared for what was to come, and after getting 15 souls, I came up to kill the mimic, but not get the thing. So I did it again. And again. And again. 12 fucking times in a row. Surprise math lesson, alright? 15 souls times 12 mimics is 180 souls. And factoring in the 36% chance to drop a soul in master mode is about 500 enemies killed, so I can get a single putrid scent. Mind you, this is supposed to be a 20% drop from a corrupt mimic. After that horrible luck, the traveling merchant came by and sold me a blue chicken egg, which I thought was pretty cool. Then I did some extra things like fight a sandstorm and make some crystal darts to fight the twins. I used the Phantom Phoenix mostly, focusing on the spasmicism first. I'm at half health when he goes down, and not particularly worried about the Retinazer. I took a quick pit stop at the Nerds and then finished it off with relative ease. I have two things to make with Soul to Sight. The Optic Staff and a Fairy Bell. I pretty much instantly make the Optic Staff and retire the Spider Staff. Now I have to wait for the next night to fight the Destroyer, so I run into the jungle to farm some Derplings. I've been doing this randomly throughout the run because I need that Glomer's Flower, and for 41 total kills, I got it, which is pretty good for a 1% chance. After making some potions for the fight, I spawned it in and died again. I wasn't using the Stormbow and Holy Arrows, so I should probably try that next. First though, I finish off my Life Fruits and then get to max HP with an Aegis Fruit for some more defense. Then the recording ends. Day 11 starts with a quick Solar Eclipse that gives me an Eye Spring. I spend some time trying to make the Fairy Bell and then I do that pretty quickly, and then this overlaps with me getting my Holy Arrows, so I have about 800 for this fight. Night falls and I spawn it in, and I notice a huge difference in the damage I'm doing. The fight is fairly straightforward, and 300 arrows later, it's dead. Right after I went to the ocean and farmed some sharks so I can make the Mega Shark, and then went to sleep to fight the twins again. I need more souls to make a pickaxe, so after this I'm gonna get some Chlorophyte. After over 300 ore, I logged off for the day. When I spawn in on day 12, I met with the traveling merchant which sells me a new pet, the baby harpy. When I was mining Chlorophyte, I found the Plantera Bulb. 
so now I'm digging out a huge arena in the jungle to fight it. After an hour and a half and a goblin invasion that I did not ask for at all, the hole is finished and then I went to bed. After placing platforms for 10 minutes on day 13, I did a little bit of yard work. After mowing and fishing, I had the potions to fight Plantera, so I did just that. The first attempt was a little shaky, but I still beat it and I was a little surprised in the moment. I was a little bummed that I didn't get any of the three pets from Plantera, but hopefully finding other bulbs won't be that hard. Then I went into the temple, and of course, no need to unlock the door. To get ready to fight Golem, I completely disarmed every trap in there, including the spikes. I don't know why, but less damage is always good. I died in the temple, so I took a detour to the dungeon to get a tactical shotgun, a sniper rifle, a sniper scope, and both items from Bone Lee for Master Ninja Gear. I also need to get a bunch of pets from here too. My time there didn't last long, but I did get a black belt. And I finally got to use my Glorifite when I bought an auto hammer and made myself full Shroomite armor. I actually didn't have enough shrooms, so I got some and once again detoured to the dungeon, but didn't get anything great. Rather than going for more shrooms, I fought Deer Clops again, cause why not? No pets though, and then I played with the drone before getting the Avenger Emblem to fight him again. This time I got the Eye Bone, so be prepared to see Chester for the rest of the entire video. I finally finished my armor set, so I bought a few more Tavern Keep sentries and fought Deer Clops again and got nothing. Then I started on a bigger project. A giant enemy farm in the underground snow. After another hour and a half, this hole is finally done. The reason I need this is to get a frozen key for the Frost Hydra in the dungeon. I actually get a key within 30 minutes, so all the time I spent digging isn't really going to be used again. The next day I bought the Tiki Kodum from the Witch Doctor just to realize that it kinda sucks. I also got a bunch of dangerous desert cave walls to use in my snow farm to convert it into a desert farm so I can get the desert key. I did get the Basculist Mount while building, so that's pretty cool, but now I need to place 35 quintillion sand to get this to register as a desert biome. Partway through this, the traveling merchant came by again to give me this star and Phoenix fox pets for a small fee of 2 platinum, and then bought a pet werewolf during the blood moon. I eventually read the wiki and said I didn't need to place the 35 quintillion sand from before, so I just AFK'd here for a little while, and then came back and built a house. I then thought I wasn't getting enough spawns in my farm, so I went to the actual desert and started farming, and got the key almost instantly. When I was at the dungeon before, I realized that it didn't spawn with the wall that spawns the snipers, so I got a bunch of bricks and made the dangerous walls myself. And then, you know what time it is. It's time to make another giant fucking hole in the map for yet another farm. I did get the desert tiger staff though, so that's a plus I guess. The princess moved in during this, so I bought Bernie's button and a bunch of paintings. After that, another two hours, I was mostly done with the farm, and I did get a sniper rifle almost instantly. And after another two hours of renovations, this thing is massive and spawns things fairly quickly. So I'm happy for now and will definitely be happy later. After this, I got a wisp in a bottle and the tactical shotgun in like five minutes, along with like a thousand specter staffs. I just sat in this box for a while and got some extra useless things to add to the money stack. After leaving in the money box, I fought Queen Slime once and got both the gelatinous pillion and a blade staff, so that's pretty sick. Fun fact. The blade staff used to drop from enchanted swords with a 1 in 35 drop chance. And if this is still the case, I would not be doing this challenge at all, simply because I don't think I've killed 35 enchanted swords total in my almost 1000 hours of this game. Even if I did get it by random chance one time. Around this time I started farming random bosses again, and I killed the wall of flesh and got the goat skull mount. I did the same with queen slime and got the thing on the second attempt, but I'll need to get another one for the replicas on the dessert. So I'll need to farm a little bit more, and by a little more, I only mean two more times. After a silly little slimy craft, I bought the mud bud from the zoologist, and at least this is in the top 10 best pets in the game compared to a lot of the other ones. Then it's time for another silly pet. I crafted the wooden fishing rod to catch trash from this tiny pond under my house, and a while later I caught a Joja Cola. So I wanted to try to get a shot for a thumbnail for this video, and I accidentally drank it. So I had to go back to the pond and do it all again and actually got the Junimo pet this time. I ended the day by making a Duke fish run arena and attempting the boss earlier than I usually would. Another fun fact, I have only actually beat Duke once, and I struggled through it with a friend on normal mode, so solo on master mode is not looking great for me. I got it to like 6,000 health left and then got screwed by the extra phase at the end, so I tried again and the same thing happened just a little bit earlier. In the final moments of this 8 hour long recording, I fought the Wall of Flesh again because I thought it would be smart to get a Ranger Elmland 
on top of the Avenger Emblem that I already had, because I don't really need a Magic Quiver anymore. Then I tried Duke one more time, and died yet again to the third phase, and called it a night. Day 15 started with a quick modification to my Old Ones Army Arena, where I added a lava floor toggled by a switch. The plan is that this will help a bit when I'm fighting the Pumpkin Moon, which I'm conveniently doing right now. There's a few things that I'm looking to get from this, like the 6 different pets, plus the horse and blade, plus the 2 OK range weapons, the stake launcher, and the candy corn rifle. By the end I got to wave 15 and got the hexed branch, spider egg, and both of the 2 ranged weapons. Another thing I plan for is one specific pet that could be a huge pain if I didn't plan for it. The magical pumpkin seed. This thing is a 1 in 200 drop from pumpkin harvested only during Halloween. And since I just beat the pumpkin moon, it's now Halloween, and I got the seed in like 40 pumpkins, which is incredibly above average. The rest of the day I spent in the dungeon farm trying to get a tabby and goodie bags for the black cat pet. By the time the day was over, I had the tabby and 5 goodie bags, but didn't get the pet from him. I also bought the dynamite cat pet from the zoologist. I was gonna fight the twins again, but then a blood moon came, so I went fishing for the dread nautilus. After a little fight, I killed it and got the sandwing staff. Then the pirates came the next morning and gave me the pirate staff too. With a bunch of the more tedious items out of the way, I moved back into trying to get the boss pets, starting with the twins, which I got on my first try. Then I fought the destroyer in the same night, but didn't get that one. Then I did the old one's army again for some defender medals and found Abigail's flower on the ground to end the day. I've been doing this challenge for over two weeks now and I still have less than half of the pets, so why not do something productive for once? Or I could do the old one's army again. Yeah, that, that sounds better. After reading in four times, I actually did something useful and summoned the Eclipse. I really only need the Deadly Spear Staff, but a Broken Hero Sword isn't bad either. I got both of them in the first half of the event, so I just killed time till it was over. Then it's back to Old One's Army Yang six more times until I can buy the final cane from the Tavern Keep for this tier. After that incredibly important sidetrack, I made a Plantera Bulb farm in the jungle and called it a day. Right back in the jungle on day 17, I started a Golem Arena, and 15 minutes later I'm finally fighting him. I don't think I get below half health during this fight at all, but Gollum's dead now. I also saw a Plantera Ball from below the temple, so I dug down there and fought her again too, but didn't get anything useful. I got an Eye of Gollum from this fight though, so I made myself a Sniper Scope and eventually a Recon Scope. Then decided to revisit a long lost friend. The Duke. This time I'm using the Tack Shotgun and Chlorified Bullets, and I'm feeling pretty good. Then, once again, I died at the third phase, but realized something else. I beat Gollum, so I can fight the Martians now. So I set up a small building and looked for a probe. About halfway through the event, the first saucer spawns and I deal with it the only way I know how. The Hook of Dissonance. This works pretty well till the second phase where I can't fire the hook fast enough to dodge the beam, so I die pretty quick. Then a second saucer came and I did the same thing and died again. I did get the Scutlix mount during this, which is pretty cool though. I had enough defender medals to buy a full armor set and a ballista staff, so now I only need 184 defender medals for the other three. Great. I also fought Gollum again to get the light pet from him, and fought him a few more times and died and also rage quit. Day 18 started with another Gollum fighting spree where I still can't get a stinger. I have no idea if it's good or not, and I still don't because I don't actually get it at all during this challenge. After a quick eclipse, I dug around the underground snow for a while to try and find the baby penguin pet, but I don't. Then I spent some time yet again digging around the snow before getting distracted by fighting Deerclops and getting the final thing from him, the Houndius Shootius. Something else I did was revisit the Crimson Mile near the dungeon. I need to get the pets from the Crimson, and this is how I'm gonna do it. I used the pond in the middle to fish because the only way I can get the Crimson Heart pet is from Crimson Crates, and I get it pretty quickly. Then it comes down to farming enemies until I can get enough vertebrae to summon the brain and hope it gives me the two pets I need. After the first attempt, I got nothing, so it's gonna be a very long process. After another 20 minutes of farming, I got another attempt, and once again I got nothing. Great. On day 19, I'm still trying for a stinger and still don't get it, but I'm also making a farm for lizards. This isn't only for the power cells, but also for the lizard pet. After about an hour, I got a jungle key from this and made a funny little thing in the wall. Partway through the build process, I summoned Plantera again and died. This was good though, because when I returned, the Skeleton Merchant was here, and I need to get something from him. I'm trying to get the Magic Lantern pet, and he only sells it on a full moon. But as you may see, it's currently a waxing crescent. So we need to wait like 4 days and nights to get to the right phase without this guy dying or despawning. So I'm gonna have to wait a long time. It's okay though, because I'm in the temple, so I can still farm for the Lizard Egg in here. 
So the plan while I wait is to have the two frost hiders form blizzards for me, while I start fishing for jungle crates to get the turtle pet. A while later I have no turtle, but I do have the magic lantern, and after a goblin genocide I visited the dungeon to open the jungle chest. I've never used the piranha gun before this, and I thought that it looked okay right now. I got tired of being in the jungle, so I went back to farming the crimson for vertebrae, and expanded the form a bit, and ended up getting another pet, the monster mate. After killing the brain four times, I still got nothing, but I got both on the fifth somehow. Continuing on this boss streak, I did the destroyer again, and did it four times to get its pet. Then I took like the 500th detour of this challenge, and looked for the glow tulip, and found it near my shimmer pool pretty easily. Then I made an attempt at the tier 3 Olwen's army, and got cooked in the final wave, but I did get the ogre pet. I thought I could actually beat it if I could get a better whip than the one I was using, so I refought the pumpkin move to try for the dark harvest. I didn't get it, but I did get the Cursed Sapling pet, Witch's Room, and the Pumpkin pet. Then I tried Plantera again and still died and rage quit because of that. I have officially hit day 20 in this hell of a challenge. I have just over half of the pets and some of the hardest ones left, plus a couple of stragglers. I started the first day of the double digits by making a weird arena for the Martians. I think I have one of my most ingenious inventions in here, which is pretty much common sense for the average player. I used actuators to turn on and off this platform, and this is the only available space for enemies to spawn on, so I'm essentially turning on and off the whole event. After spawning in the extraterrestrials, I died to the saucer again but realized that it's a thing where I have to go back and forth to dodge it. I actually killed it on my second attempt by using the piranha gun to passively damage it while I focus on dodging, which worked incredibly well. My second saucer kill dropped the Xeno Staff and the third a Cosmic Car Key, so now all I need from this event is the Radical Alien Pet, Plus I kinda wanna get the Inflix flavor and the Zeno Popper. So I just summoned them again and got the Cosmic Skateboard and the Zeno Popper, but no Inflix flavor yet. I took some time to dive very stupidly to Duke, and also to dive very stupidly from Duke. Then I gave him an actual try. I literally only used the Piranha Gun the whole time, cause I really needed to focus on dodging during the last phase, and I actually killed him this time and got the Shrimpy Truffle. Day 21 starts with another Martian invasion, and after 3 saucers I got an Influx waiver. After the event was over, the traveling merchant came by again, and scammed me for a companion cube. Then I fought and actually beat Plantera again, and got the Pingby Staff. Then I did that two more times, and got the same treasure bag all three times somehow. I tried one more time, and got something different at least, but no pets. I took yet another detour to make the Terror Blade, and then tried the Old Ones Army again, and actually beat it, but I got nothing useful from it, so I just did it again. I did get the Flying Dragon from the first one though, which kinda helps cause my loadout is a split summoner slash warrior build. After the second try I got the same bag again, so I just quit for the day. I really don't want to ever have to do the Old Ones Army again, so I started with that on day 22. I died right at the end, but I didn't lose immediately so I ran back as soon as I respawned, and just when the losing animation played, Betsy flew over me and I healed her, and I got the pet from that. Then I went to the jungle to see if any more bulbs had spawned, and one did. So I fought Plantera again and still got nothing. I did find another bulb near the underworld, so I slowly guided it up to my arena, and I only got the seedler from it, which is okay. I did the pumpkin moon yet again, and got the horseman's blade and a raven staff, which is everything useful that I wanted to get, so I'm pretty much done with this for now. Just kidding. I still need to get the black cat pet from the goodie bags, so I did it again to try to get it. I didn't know it yet, but this was going to be the hardest pet for me to get. And of course I didn't get it, so I just went to bed today. I started day 23 by making another Shroomite helmet for when I'm using a bow, because I plan on doing the Old Ones Army yet again to get the Aerial Bane. I got it on my first try, and then I tried it out during the Pumpkin Moon. Nothing really eventful happened other than me figuring out that I didn't really like the bow, so after farming goodie bags in the dungeon farm, I fought King Slime a lot and summoned pirates to see if they were any better for farming them. I waited for the next night to try the Frost Moon for the first time, and noticed that it was a little harder and then a lot harder when I got to the Ice Queen. Based on how that went, I'm just gonna leave that till after the Moon Lord. Speaking of the Moon Lord, I've decided that I'm killing him today. And step one of that is to kill the Lunatic Cultist. After taking a quick detour to get a brain of confusion for later, I'm building an asphalt highway also for later. Then, I finally got to where I was about to start the fight, and my raven accidentally spawned it. Something I learned just before this fight is that when he brings out his dummies, he can't ever be on the left, so you only need to look out on the top and the right. When he eventually dies, he drops his pet from the first try, which is pretty nice. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part of the game, the Celestial Pillars. I obviously wanted to start with the Vortex one to get some better ranged weapons, but I felt like I was hitting a wall. I was making a small amount of progress every time I went over there, so I just kept hitting that wall. I eventually made just a hidey hole for myself while shooting an Electrosphere launcher, and that worked okay. 
I actually made the third Shroomite Helmet to help with this strategy specifically. I did eventually kill the pillar and I also died in the process, but now I have access to the Phantasm and Vortex Beater. I went after Stardust next because I need both the Dragon Staff and the Cell Staff. I didn't die nearly as much and made both, but mainly used the Dragon Staff. I then basically did a coin flip for which to go after next and chose the Nebula Pillar. It wasn't too bad so I headed right over to the Solar Pillar. I found that holding a certain spot on this platform worked really well if I didn't get swarmed by Korites, so I just did that and tried to catch the Korites as they came. I only died once while fighting this pillar, and now I have a minute until my shit gets rocked. I got on the asshole highway from earlier and barely lasted a minute until I realized this strategy is not gonna work. I swapped out my chest plate for a better one and recrafted all my potions to get ready for round 2. I also crafted a vortex beater to see if it would be any better than the phantasm I was currently using. After summoning it in, I got a little bit further than last time, but still died. So now I need to redo all of the pillars to summon the boss again, because I was out of vortex and stardust fragments. I'm gonna skip past most of this because nobody cares about the pillars again, so start us now, nebula down, vortex down, and solar down. Boss time! This time I got the core open but died to a true eye, but now I can make like 4 more spawners so I should kill it at some point. I got some more potions and I tried again. After a missed dodge, I pit stopped at the nurse and was ready to get right back into the fight. All the eyes were down and I was doing okay on health, and then the core just died. I got the moonlord pet on the first try along with the suspicious tentacle, but I still have to kill it a few more times for the lunar portal and rainbow crystal staffs. I also want to get the Meowmere to get the Zenith, but I already got the Star's Wrath. So I fought him again and died to poor timing. I'm shifting back to melee for the rest of the run because the Zenith is just so good for every circumstance. So I shimmered my Shroomite armor and made Beetle armor out of the Chlorophyte, shimmered the Recon Scope for a Destroyer Emblem, and used that to make a Fire Gauntlet to replace the Ranger Emblem. I fought him again to hopefully get some more Illuminate to get a full Solar Armor set. The Star's Wrath and Fire Gauntlet make this quite a bit easier, but I still like to stop by the Nurse when I'm on Potion Cooldown. After killing all the eyes, I make it another pit stop and get body blocked by a slime in the worst possible spot and died, which is just phenomenal, man. I tried again and died, so I had to redo all the pillars again, and wow, guess what, we're back at the Moon Lord, guys. This time the core's open and I finally kill it for the second time after like five different tries. After finally making my armor set, I started to farm him because the zenith would be great right about now. I got a terrarian, so I cooked the boss pretty well and got the rainbow crystal staff on the next one. I need to do the pillars again because I got another Star's Wrath, so after that I died because I had no potions, but I had fragments again, so after another refight I got bullshit, and after another I got more bullshit, and then after another I finally got a Meowmere, so now it's finally time to make my zenith. I tested it out on Duke because I didn't have his pet yet, and it went great because when I went to shimmer my terrarium with a truffle worm in it, I dropped the worm in the shimmer so there's no finding that. Instead I tried it on Plantera and it worked about as well as you would think, plus I got the seedling pet this time. I found another bulb so I tried it again and finally got the Plantera Seedling Pet, so now I don't need to fight Plantera anymore in this challenge. While I was down here I was also mining Chlorophyte, so when I came back I made a DCU and this was going to come in handy later. Till then, I caught a Truffle Worm and actually did fight Duke this time and got his pet, but I still need to get the Tempest Rod from him. Then I did the Frost Mew and got the Ice Queen Pet, the Everscream Pet, the Rudolph Mount, the Baby Grinch Whistle, accidentally summoned the Cultist, and the Sand Tank Mount. I spent that whole day and night cycle in the dungeon to get presents, and thankfully presents are a much more common drop than goodie bags, but I still don't get the pet from it anyways. I did get a Snugglem though, so I fought them, but that didn't really achieve anything. It was kind of fun though. After doing that three more times, I fought Duke and got the Tempest Staff, and then faced the consequences of killing the Cultist and fought the Pillars again. When I beat the Moon Lord though, it didn't drop the Portal Staff, so I just did another Pumpkin Moon and spent some more time in the dungeon just to get nothing. Then I spent some time at the temple to try for the lizard egg again, and I got it after like an hour which is pretty much the average drop rate. Then at 2am on this fine day, I got out the DCU and cut out a giant hole in the ground for something you'll see later. On day 24 I continued working on my giant hole project, and I'm gonna explain that one now. One of the pets I need is the spiffo plush, and that is a 1 in 1500 drop chance from a zombie. So now I need to make a farm that can sorta of efficiently kill zombies for that. After placing walls for 30 minutes, I finally have a platform that will spawn zombies during the night pretty fast. After building a small death period on top, the farm is done, so I tested it out during the blood moon and it worked good enough. One thing I would need though is a void bag so I wouldn't lose it in case my inventory gets filled while being afk. I was afk for a couple hours but didn't get anything and honestly I didn't expect to get it that quickly. Rather than just sit here and do nothing, I took out the dcu to the snow to look for another pet and making the fifth giant hole in the map. After placing a lot of ice and adding multiple layers, it's done. Simply sitting in the center while waiting for Ice Mimics to spawn, and after another hour, I get what I'm looking for. The toy sled for the snowman pet. 
After that 2 hour long detour, I took another one up to the hallowed platform to farm for the blessed apple and got it in like 2 minutes somehow. Now, I face a challenge that I've been dreading since the start of this challenge. You may have noticed I have yet to kill one boss, and that is the Empress of Light. I wanted to wait until I could attempt to get the Terra Prisma before I fought it, but first I need to get Prismatic Lace Wings. So I clementated parts of the Corruption and summoned the Blood Moon, and after some time, I got 13 before finding the rest of the Blood Moon in the zombie farm. First, I fought it at night to see how hard this would be, and it didn't seem that hard. Plus, after 3 tries, I got the pet, which is the last light pet that I needed for the entire challenge. Then, I started to attempt it during the daytime, so I equipped Hallowed Armor, Master Ninja Gear, and the Brain of Confusion from the day before, and died twice to it, but got it on the third try. Yet another detour to the Cavern Cheat, get the final 3 sentries, and then I was on to trying to get the Lunar Portal Staff, and I got it on my first try. Then I went to dig around the snow to find the penguin pet, but to no avail, but I can just fish for it later. Then I did the same for the jungle for the turtle pet, and also didn't find it, but I can also fish for that too, which I did. I caught 14 jungle crates, and out of the 6th I got it. And then I went to bed, but before that I ran into the zombie farm, and during the night, I got the spiffo plush. I goofed off a lot to start day 25, but then I started to fish for the penguin pet, and caught a zephyr fish instead. I did catch a bunch of frozen crate, but I didn't get it. I wanted to get a lot of fishing the other day, so I overlapped both the penguins with the scaly truffle, changing the ice mimic farm into the hollow and carving out a big pond in the middle. This didn't work out as I wanted to, because instead of frozen crates, I only caught hallowed ones, but I did get the truffle and another zephyr fish. Then I spent the next couple hours doing the frost and pumpkin moons for the dog and cat pets. After the pumpkin moon and grunting the dungeon all day, I had 15 goodie bags, but no cat pet. Yet another fun fact. With the 1 in 80 chance for an enemy to drop a goodie bag, times the 1 in 150 chance for a goodie bag to give the pet, comes to an average of 12,000 enemies I have to be killed for one singular cat pet. This is a little better than the dog pets, because those are a 1 in 13, so that comes out to only 5,700 enemies. So, to put it lightly, I have a lot of work to do. I put a hole in that to make a quick change to the zombie farm to make it snow themed, because now I need to kill wolves for Lilith's necklace. So I summon the blood moon and hope for the best. I got it after only 3 minutes, so now the thousand snow that I placed was for almost nothing, but now that's all the mounts done. Detours out of the way, I got back to moon farming, this time for the frost moon. Instead of spending the whole time in the dungeon, I did the pumpkin moon to see if it would have any better spawns, and I think it didn't, so I don't do this again. I got 60 some presents, but no puppy, so we'll see if we can get it again later. I spent the next while in the dungeon, then tried yet another way to get more spawns by doing both the Frost Legion and a Blood Moon at the same time, but it was still not as fast as the dungeon farm. Then I did Frost Moon and went AFK in the dungeon farm thinking that the dragon would protect me. But it let a Diabolus through and sent me back to the zombie farm for like 3 hours, and then the recording ends. At the beginning of day 26, I have 58 presents, and after opening them, no dog whistle, so I just did it again. Now I have a whopping 87 presents, and I still didn't get it. So I was a little annoyed, which was only worse, because I thought it was a 1 in 150 drop rate, not the 1 in 450 chance that it actually is. So I went again and again, and had 117 presents, and I still didn't get it. So in a fit of rage, I destroyed the west coast and logged off. Back at it again on day 27, and it's Frost Moon, and 99 present unboxing video. Present 74, finally, gives me the whistle, so now it's time to do the same exact thing, just with the Pumpkin Moon this time. Before that though, I bought a bunch of Rocket 4s from the Cyborg to make mini nukes with them. And you can probably guess what that's for. The rest of the day is just doing a Pumpkin Moon farming in the dungeon. I even put a Gnome and a Shimmer Pool down there, so I can use the Shimmer Pool to get Coin Luck, and the Gnome just to get Normal Luck just so I can increase my chances of getting goodie bag drops. You've probably seen all of it so much, so I'm just going to skip over a lot of this farming. I got the bat hood from a goodie bag, which is rarer than the cat pet, which really, really pissed me off. But I just kept going until I had 18 bags after one farm session. I finally got the cat pet after 12 hours of farming total, and I wasn't even happy about it, because even still, I am not done with the challenge yet. There's still a pet that I need to get from the traveling merchant, so I set up a house near the ice lake to fish while waiting for it. After like an hour and three different merchants, I got it, which kind of surprised me, so now it's time to fish for this damn penguin pet. While fishing, I got a random deer cock spawn, and a Lilith's necklace, and a fucking slime staff, but no penguin pet. And at this point, 15 crates in. After like two hours and 20 more crates, I got it, so now it's on to the final pet the dirtiest block. 
I started by blowing up the spawn cave with the mini nukes, and then going underground and making a long line across the world. Then to the old one's army area, then the ground underneath that, the hallow, the old corruption, and wait, did you see that? There it is. The end of the challenge. Wait. Yeah, I didn't notice it, and I thought it was a normal dirt block. So, I trashed the 1 in 2.3 million pet, which hurt so much, but not as bad as it did the moment that I realized it hours later. I eventually switched to using the DCU because I was worried about things despawning after I blew them up. After going through most of the top of the world, I moved down and found another one near a living tree. And that's it. That's all the pets in Terraria, gone in this single world? in almost an entire month. I thought it was fun, and I don't really know how you end these videos, uh, so I'm probably going to stream another one of these challenges here on YouTube soon. So like, subscribe, all that jazz, and here's me trying to fight the Moon Lord with a coin gun with platinum coins. See ya!